Hello and welcome. Today we have a couple of interesting stories including one about how a man threatened to report his neighbor for abusing his dog and found the dog mysteriously dead the next day. Sit back, relax and enjoy. First story. Am I the idiot for announcing my pregnancy news on the same day my cousin announced she was engaged? I, female 30, am a part of an extended family group chat on Facebook. My family rarely chat in the group unless there is a big life event happening or we are organizing a family event. Earlier this year, one of my aunties asked if anyone had any life updates to share. My cousin, F30, had a particularly big life update and announced she got engaged to her partner of seven years first. All the family including myself congratulated her and I was genuinely very happy. I didn't think too much of it at the time but I thought since we were going around sharing our life updates, I thought it would only be fitting to announce my pregnancy in the group chat as well. All my family congratulated me as well and everyone seemed really excited about my baby news including my cousin. A couple of days later, my cousin messages a long paragraph absolutely furious. She accused me of stealing her spotlight announcing my pregnancy on the same day as her engagement, although she seemed happy for me in the group chat the day before. I immediately apologized to her and felt so guilty after the fact. My cousin never messages me back after my apology and I didn't talk to her again for the rest of my pregnancy. I feel really sad about all this as it's now formed a wedge between my mum and my auntie as they have taken sides. To top it all off several months later, my beautiful baby daughter was born on the same day as my cousin's birthday, coincidence right? I have very recently given birth to a beautiful daughter and I wanted to make a baby announcement on the day she was born. However I could not bring myself to do it because my cousin just turned 30 which is a huge milestone. I am already not on speaking terms with my cousin and her family just over this and don't want to steal my cousin's spotlight a second time. Although I feel deep down that I have every right to celebrate my daughter's birth and her future birthdays without having to feel guilty of stealing someone else's spotlight just because they share a birthday. The top replies. I'll take the down votes and go not the idiot with this. Firstly, you were just answering a question, same as your cousin. Secondly, I find it bizarre that society seems to think only one person is allowed news at a time. Thirdly, I also find it weird people seem to think you can only be happy for one person at a time. Fourthly, it's been months and there's a new baby, and people are still sore about an announcement? It's not like you stood up whilst she was saying her vows and interrupted. You just followed one exciting announcement with another. Time to move on emo. The second reply, not gonna lie I think original poster seems ridiculous with the birthday thing. If I had a kid there's zero chance they wouldn't get birthdays because my no-contact cousin's birthday is also on that day. Even considering doing that to her kid makes her a bit of an A for me, but I realize that's not the am I the idiot question here. It doesn't appear anyone has asked original poster not to celebrate they're just randomly extending this drama with the birthday stuff. I have some family like this and it's exhausting. Just a constant competition for who has been more victimized. I don't think original posters the ass here but she needs to grow a spine to protect her kid from her relatives if this isn't a victimization competition. The third reply, not the idiot, you guys were asked about life updates. You gave a life update. It's no big deal. Your cousin needs to chill out. Also go ahead and tell them about your kid being born. You have every right to want to share the news of your child being born with your family. The fourth reply, I'm going to say not the idiot, your aunt asked and you both responded. It's not like she out of the blue announced it and you announced your pregnancy as well at that time. I would have just messaged people individually on the birth announcement, but even if you did it in the group chat wouldn't have mattered, which 30 yo makes a big deal about their birthday. Second story. Am I the idiot for telling my mom her husband can walk their children down the aisle but he was never my parents so is not walking me? My mom met her husband when I was 17 and she married him after five months of knowing him. I was already living with my grandparents so I could attend college when he moved in with her. So we never lived together. He never parented me or put a roof over my head or any of the stuff that some might say makes him worthy of playing father of the bride. 
He's an okay guy but I don't love him or feel particularly close to him. He's just my mom's husband and the father to my half-siblings she had with him once I was already moved out. My mom has apparently decided though, that he has done, so much for me, that I should be making him father of the bride at my wedding and have him walk me down the aisle. My dad died when I was still a baby so mom doesn't count him, even though they were married and everything. Though they were both very young so maybe she didn't give a shit about him and only married him because she got pregnant. I don't know, but she was talking about her husband. He was acting like he expected it too and was talking about how I'd need to be introduced to some of his friends and co-workers so when I invite them, they identify me as his daughter. I thought it was crazy. The man is not my parent and he's only family on a technicality but we are not close, we hardly see each other ever. I told my mom it wasn't going to happen. She went crazy and accused me of being ungrateful and told me I was being disrespectful and how could he not walk his kid down the aisle. I told him he could walk their children down the aisle someday but he was never my parent and I was never his kid so he was not walking me. He was offended as hell. He told me he'd never do anything for me again. I asked him what he had done. He said he took care of my mom and gave me siblings and he put me through college, he didn't. He said if those things weren't appreciated then why did he even bother? Mom told me I should be worshipping the ground he walks on because he's been such a good dad. She called me selfish some more and then I just walked out and blocked her. But she told my grandparents, her parents, and they asked could I do it to show I appreciate him for being there for mom and for being kind to me. I told them he wasn't very kind to me there and I pointed out that my uncle, dad's brother, was already doing it. They told me it would be kind to let him. Am I the idiot? The top replies. Not the idiot. Wow their reactions are annoying and weird. If he was in your life since you were a baby sure maybe I could understand it. But you were already moved out when he came into the picture. Sorry they're being so ridiculous about this. Try not to let it ruin your special day. The second reply. Not the idiot. It's amazing how this act of entitlement probably has just destroyed any good feelings original poster had about her mom's husband. It seems like he just went from, good guy, glad he's there for mom, to, delusional pushy idiot who thinks he's owed special status because he exists. But while we're on the subject, original poster, I really think I should be the one to walk you down the aisle. Sure, we've never met, but I did something nice for someone once, I figure you owe me. Third reply, it's crazy that your mom would automatically assume him to be your father, but forget that you had already been away from home and in school already before she got married to this, what I would call, weirdo. It's not fair that they're trying to claim him as FOTB and he's not, from what you told us, even an actual parent to you. You shouldn't feel obligated to have him walk you down the aisle, and if he's so hurt that he threatened to never do anything for you again then I say, specifically don't invite him. And if that pisses off ya moms, don't invite her either. From her actions alone in your statement, she chose him over you and that's not fair. I'm glad your biological father's brother is walking you down the aisle, not much was said about him, but considering you're letting him walk you down the aisle. It seems like he was more of a father to you than the step-parent. It's your wedding at the end of the day, it should go how you and your partner planned it. Third story. I left a letter to my neighbor threatening to report them for animal abuse and they sent me a picture of their dead dog. The neighborhood I live in is very quiet. About two months ago a family that's at the opposite end of the street from me, ten houses or so, got a dog. This dog was always outside. And they have a pretty big yard so it makes sense for it to be outside but the poor thing would bark and bark for hours. They left their dog outside for hours on end. I would wake up to it barking around 5 a.m and heard it parking until around 9 p.m. I'm not home all day so I don't know if it was out there all day, but I got home around 7 p.m. and could hear it barking until 9 every night. This dog also has a very distressed bark, which probably came from barking for hours on end. It's also extremely cold where I live so that dog was outside at the freezing weather all day long. I grew up with multiple dogs and I can't imagine leaving my pet outside all day especially when it's constantly barking to come inside. And it wasn't even a big dog either. 
I'm not good with breeds but it's black and white and has very short fur and the owners didn't put anything warm on it before leaving it outside. Eight days ago I decided on leaving. A letter on the fence to their house that read something like this. To whom it may concern, myself, along with the other people of the neighborhood, can hear your dog barking all day long. I understand wanting to take advantage of your large yard, but it's clear that your dog prefers otherwise. There's no way it's just for bathroom breaks, because I can hear your dog barking from the hours of 7 to 9 p.m. every night. Dogs can be hard work, I know it, but you shouldn't have gotten a pet if you weren't going to take care of it. Leaving your dog outside for hours in single-digit temperatures with no warm gear is not taking care of it. If I continue to hear your dog barking, I will be contacting our local humane society and reporting you. If you have anything you'd like to add, please contact me at my number. For the next few days it was the same thing with the dog barking. Until yesterday I received a photo of the dog with a message saying, I hope you're happy. It's laying down in the grass. There's no physical wounds I can see but it doesn't look alive. It could just be sleeping but I didn't hear the dog barking at all the morning of the day I received the message. I feel so terrible. I wish I just hadn't said anything because now I've basically killed this dog. Now I don't know if I should tell someone or what to do. I don't even know if the dog is dead. I'm just wishing I hadn't said anything. This honestly doesn't even feel like real life. The top replies. Call the police and animal services because 1. Neglecting an animal is a crime 2. You have proof that they were aware of the animal's situation and have displayed a callous lack of concern 3. Even if nothing comes of this legally. They will not be allowed to adopt from reputable shelters, breeders, or humane societies with this on their record. You didn't do anything to this animal original poster. These people are unfeeling monsters who wanted to hurt you. The second reply. You know, if this poor dog was killed by its owner, you just cut short a full life of misery. The only thing you can do now is to go to the police, but be very careful. Someone who can kill their dog and who has your number can go berserk anytime. Do it only if it's totally anonymous. The third reply. Oh that's horrible. I have a couple of great Pyrenees that hate being inside the house but when it gets cold I'm much more tolerant of them being in the house than outside. Now during the warm months, they get as much freedom as they please, and can come in if they choose to in order to cool off for a while. But once it gets down below freezing, they are coming inside. I'll bundle up and take them out for a while but if they show signs of being cold it's right back in to warm up. 